we are officially guys officially v3 is open source which means that you can run engine and to kind of kick things off i'm going to do a quick little screen share here if that's cool yeah, absolutely. and i just want to show this little demo here i'm going to show you guys what i think you care about which is uh something that i think is important which is the network tab, right? So let's take a peek at this network tab here. And what I've got here is I decided to pick two really crazy databases. We're going to go with Quadrant, which is a vector database. And we're going to go with Terso, which is SQLite. And I want you to just watch this network tab fly. So let me go ahead and send some requests here. And you can see we're dipping down. You know, I, I can almost get down into single digit millisecond responses. This is with the cross database join, guys. So, you know, we're, we're almost running at native speed. Like I'm, I'm pulling 12, 12 milliseconds there. It is lightning, lightning fast. And I have this available as a really cool demo. Actually, we'll drop it in the chat that you guys can run yourself locally with multiple different connectors. It is the Supergraph NDC demo. So you guys can go ahead and pull that up. I'll have somebody drop that in the chat. And of course, as always, V3 is available and you guys can go and play with it now on our master branch inside of the GraphQL engine under the V3 folder. So check that out. But really, really exciting stuff today. Um, super excited to just finally be able to say that V3 is open source. So um, please play with it. Let us know how it works. Let us know what you think and uh, give it a try. That's that's all for me for today, Rob. Not too much other than that, but I think that's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, power pack. We appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to have Vamshi go ahead and join us on stage. Uh, some of the improvements that we've planned for permissions in V3. First one is better ex explained with an example. So you have a... Uh, Slack like model where you have user channel messages and a user channel membership that's described by a user channel table. Your permissions are going to look something like this. So for user channel, you're going to describe, you're going to specify if the current user can access the channels. And then for channel, if the channel's user is the current user. And for message table, you're going to say if the message, if the channel that belongs, sorry, if the message that belongs to the channel has access to that. Uh, particular user. Now, the, the problem with this approach though is that if you have to change the permissions of user channel, then you'll have to go and edit the permissions of like all of these tables. And as you have more and more nesting, this becomes like really challenging. So the pattern here is essentially like permissions are derived based on the permissions of the related tables so uh, what you want to actually say is that message is accessible if the message's channel is accessible but channel is accessible if like channels users are accessible <laughs> something along these lines so what we are planning to introduce uh, introduce is a feature that uh, looks something like this where you're specifying uh, user channel permissions, but when it comes to channel and message, you just refer to their parent permissions. So what this means is that if you were to change user channel permission, you don't have to change channel and message permission. Those, this is essentially a shorthand syntax to what you see, what you see here. So that's one thing. And this is the next item as allowing multiple roles per request. So this has been um, uh, an ask since like GraphQL engine was open sourced. Uh, essentially, like okay. allowing multiple roles for request is a way to compose permissions. And what we've done in V2 is that uh, we introduced a concept of inherited roles or role inheritance to compose permissions, except that it, it doesn't really solve all of the use cases. One particular use case is where you have your metadata and your auth system completely decoupled. So you want to define permissions uh, for roles in your metadata and you want to assign these roles dynamically to the users. You do not uh, know ahead of time the combination of roles that you're going to use. So this is uh, what's like not possible with inherited roles. So ideally you want to specify XSR role to be reader and editor and GraphQL engine would magically compose these permissions together and like process the request 
based on the permissions assigned to both these roles. Now, the challenging aspect of this is uh, the, the two challenges on why we have not implemented this in V2. One is the V2's architecture itself like prevents or makes it very hard to implement something like that, something like uh, supporting multiple roles per request. But V3's architecture enables this thing. However, the other challenge with this is how do you define the semantics of merging permissions? So if there are no overlapping permissions between these two roles, it's very straightforward. Uh, say reader has access only to read a bunch of tables and editor only has access to mutate a bunch of tables, then the combination of these roles is uh, very straightforward to understand. However, if these roles have uh, permissions defined on a table, if both the roles have permissions defined on a table, how does how do you compose them? Right, like for selects, at least uh, with inherited roles, we more or less solve the problem. But again, it's like quite complicated. If you have like same set of columns, then very uh, straightforward semantics. It just becomes like an R of filter of permission one and filter of permission two. That is, you get access to both sets of rows. But if you have like a different column sets, then it's complicated, right? Like, so if you have a uh, a user table where the public access, where the public role can access ID and username of all the rows, but a private role can only access uh, the uh, user's role, but in addition, they can access email. So if a request were to come in with public and private, what should the semantics of this query be? Uh, ideally, you would want email to be null for all rows except for the current user. Right, except this behavior is kind of like hard to get from a database. And in fact, no database supports this out of out of the box with uh, low level permissions. What V2 has done is uh, it borrowed some ideas from an old Microsoft paper about uh, cell-based authorization and it implements that. And in fact, like no other database does this. For mutation, so this is fairly challenging. If there are different presets, we have no way of establishing which preset is a better preset or like which preset has uh, is less restrictive. And hence, uh, what we've done with inherited roles is that whenever we encounter any of these cases, when we're deriving uh, the GraphQL schema for the inherited role, we would reject the metadata if we run into these cases. And However, this again, like is not particularly useful because you want to like combine these two uh, permissions even for mutation. Say you have like a user and an admin role and admin has always a higher priority than user. You would want to like allow this request to go through even though the, their presets are different. You would want to select the admin's preset over a user's preset. So there are a bunch of uh, conflict or merge strategies that we could come up with. The most straightforward thing is we could fail the request if there are ever uh, overlapping permission. And we could have uh, some sort of like conflict rules defined in the metadata. You could say admin insert takes precedence over users insert. And you could have it like more granular, like you could have it per table. Or like you could have like a simpler strategy, which is that when there are overlapping permission, pick the permission of the first role that's present, uh, that's presented. Now, yeah, this is one approach to this problem. The other approach, which we're considering is a more general approach, which is you implement a full-fledged policy engine into a GraphQL engine. And the idea is that uh, you move away from Hasra's notion of like what permission should be. At the end of the day, what GraphQL engine requires is that when a request comes in, you need the permissions associated with all of the tables that are being accessed in that request. So if we could like somehow provide a way to like let user define what permissions come in per request, then you don't have to subscribe to Hasra's model of permissions, like whether it's our back or whether it's our back with a bunch of improvements on top of like it, it doesn't really matter. So let me, I think, I think it's better explained uh, with an example. So if like the current scenario is that when a request comes in, Hasra would read provided like uh, this previously discussed feature is implemented. 
you would read XSRA roles from the request body, and then you would traverse the GraphQL query, derive permissions from the list of roles using various conflict strategies, and then finally execute the operation with the permissions obtained from previous step. With the policy engine, what would happen is that we just read user session, the tables and columns that are referenced in the query, and then we would pass on this information to the policy engine. Hey, like these are the, this is a user session. This is what is being accessed in this query. Now, this policy engine is expected uh, to evaluate the policies that uh, the users have written and return a bunch of permissions. And now Hasra would just apply these permissions and execute the query. And there are like several variants of like policy languages out there, uh, like mostly derived from like data log or prolog, if people are familiar with like recos that are like, you know what I'm talking about. But let me go over an example. Right. So the, the idea with the policy engine is that it's much more general than like what you could currently do with uh, Hasra's permission system. For example, you could emulate Hasra's permission system just using this set of policies. Here you have like Hasra style permissions defined for public role uh, and on product table, you have a bunch of permissions and uh, for an analyst role on product, you have slightly more general permissions than what is allowed on the product table uh, for public role. So like this yeah. thing implements uh, a merge strategy, which is uh, a conflict strategy, which picks the first role from the just of this thing. So if you have X has uh, unless when we evaluate this. you could see that, so what we want uh, is we want this policy to return a bunch of resolved permissions with this input. So the input is that a particular GraphQL query has come in and these are the tables that are being accessed on this in this query. And the user uh, information is as follows. So once you have something like this, you are, ex you are expected to output a bunch of permissions. So here you could see because the public role has come in first, the product permissions has have resolved to like a weaker set of permissions. Now, if we were to change this, you would see that like it has derived like more general permissions that are defined for analyst store. So again, uh, the idea here is that this, you could define whatever permission model like that, whatever system better suits your application, right? If, uh, for example, you have like a attribute based uh, access control system, then like, for example, this policy just says that if the user has an admin, is admin attribute set to true, then you would get like all permissions for all tables. So that's pretty much these five lines of uh, a rego policy is doing this. Again, Why don't you this just is... a heads up. We've got about a minute left in this segment. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's it, folks. We are just experimenting with a bunch of these things. Uh, we would like to hear your input on uh, what this would open up, uh, what kind of use cases that would get solved by these approaches. Um, yeah.